it just tastes so much better. Welcome to another video. Today's video is about stoves. I have an absolute fascination with uh, camping stoves. I have a modest collection. I mentioned on my last video that this one will be all about making an alcohol burning stove. I made a penny stove in one of my previous videos and although that's a great stove and it's dead easy to make, it does have its drawbacks. One of them is I have to keep it in this tub and that's because once you've used the stove you can't get the fuel back out because there's insulation in here and that insulation soaks up the um, meths or whatever fuel you're using and you can't get it out but as you've just seen it stays there and so you can't just keep this stove like that you have to keep it in some sort of a tub to keep the fumes in and there you go it's not altogether the the most uh, easy of stoves to store now this is the again an alcohol burning stove but what i've done here it's one that has the false inner wall and so that the fuel can get up behind this wall and out through these eyelets here it weighs absolutely nothing, just a few grams. And yeah, I got a little bit of a leak there that I repaired. And it's really my go-to stove for when I just want to brew up just a pot of boiling water or enough for a dehydrated meal and a cup of coffee. It's absolutely perfect. So I'm gonna show you how to make one of these. There've been loads of videos on how to make these. And the thing that I found is that people are trying to get a little bit technical on how to make these little stoves with exact measurements. Um, I've made this just by eye. I'll give you some very general measurements, but really it'll be what looks right. And I think that's what we all want, a little bit of simplicity when making these things. I'll shortly show you what basic tools I need and what obviously materials I need. But before you decide to make one of these, you've got to make a decision. And that decision is whether you want your basic stove or whether you want the brushed aluminium look. If you decide to go for the nice brushed aluminium look, then you need to get to work on the can before you drink the contents. And that's because with the can slightly pressurized, you can apply more pressure with either wet and dry paper or if you use some sort of a multi-tool like a Dremel to get whatever logo or paint is on the can. Much easier to do with the can slightly pressurized. So here's a couple of cans I've already prepared. On one of them, I've got the top section clear to the logo and on the second can, I've done about the same with the bottom. Cleared the logo off using, uh, I think I used my Dremel tool for that. So this is all you need and I'll quickly go around it. Got three blocks of wood. I'll show you these in a little bit more detail afterwards. I've got a drill bit there, that's 1.5 millimetres. I've got a Stanley knife blade. Some wet and dry paper. One coarse, one a little bit finer. Of course, I've got my two drinks cans. This time I've got the uh, top and the bottom sanded. So it's like brushed aluminium. I've got a straight edge, a Stanley knife, needle nose pliers. I've got my trusty Aldi drill with the light. <laughs> Some high temperature silicon glue and I do everything on a microfiber cloth which uh, helps soak up the blood. As far as the thickness of my jig is concerned, and when I say jig, 
I mean, how I'm going to put the blade on and rotate the can to split the can. I need to chop the bottom off the can at about that sort of height. It's just an approximate. And I want the top to be slightly bigger. And so I'm putting on another one of those, which will make the top of the can about that sort of height. The basic principles are the bottom of the stove needs to be slightly shorter than the top of the stove. So that's what I'm going to use there. So the first thing I need to do is remove this top section here where the uh, ring pull is. And I'm going to use a Stanley knife for that. So I've wrapped the can in my microfiber. I've got my Stanley knife. What I'm going to do is just gently score around the inside of the can. And every so often you'll feel the blade just nip into the aluminium. I'm not putting much pressure on at all because I don't want to make the knife blade go in too early. I want the top to come away all in one. So I'm just going to keep doing this. There you go. Until I can just push or actually pull this top section of the can away. So I've been at this now for uh, just a couple of minutes really. And there, you can just see now I'm almost through all the way around, so I think just a little, oh, a little bit further and then it'll just pop out. And you wouldn't end up with some sharp bits and little burrs and we'll tidy that lot up with some uh, wet and dry paper. Firstly, I'm going to chop the top section for the stove. And remember what I said, that for the top section I'm going to need all three pieces of wood because this is the tallest section and I'm just going to invert the can on my microfiber and just start gently scoring it. Just be really careful here that you don't press too hard because you don't want to misshape the can in any way. Any little dents or blemishes is going to let air out and you'll get a secondary flame. And there, I've just gone through on one little bit there, so I'm going to try and see if that will just pop out. Uh -huh. And there we have it. So from what I said earlier, the bottom of the stove needs to be slightly shorter than the top section. So I'll remove one of these pieces of wood, replace the blade, and start on a bottom section. And there you go, a little bit faint, but I've got an idea of where my eyelets are going to go. Now this is a bit that I've seen done in many different ways. I've seen people cut out clock faces from bits of paper, put it on the top, transpose where they think the uh, eyelets should go. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to drill one hole anywhere on this line and then I'm going to come to a six o'clock position and drill one there then I'm going to split the three and the nine o'clock and drill them there and then I'm just going to split those into halves until you'll end up getting 16 nice little eyelets and I find that 16 is about the perfect spacing you need. So in goes the first one.
I've got my one eyelet there and I'm just going to go opposite for the second one, just by eye. So I reckon that is about opposite. So I'm all done. Uh, all nice and smooth inside and all the burrs removed from the inside. Now the bit that a lot of people are afraid of and it's the inner wall. And for that I suggest you use the spare bit of can from which you took the bottom off. So there's the section of can from which I took the bottom piece for the stove. Now I'm just going to use some kitchen scissors to snip away so I've got a strip of aluminium that we can use for our inner wall. There we go. What I want to do now is find out the size I need. That's going to fit nicely into there like that. And now I want to know how tall I need this section to be. And it couldn't be easier. I don't think I pressed play here, which is a little bit annoying, so I've lost some footage. But lay all three pieces out and make a mark on what will be the inner wall at a height that is just below the rim of the top of the stove, as I've shown with the mark and the arrow. So there's my marker there. And the good thing about leaving a bit of the logo on these cans is that you can usually find the beginnings of a straight line. So I've got my inner wall, the height is now spot on, we know that, but we've got a little bit too much overlap here, so I want to work out how much of that I can trim off. And the way to do that is to just place it inside the top of my can so that it fits snugly inside the rim here. And then I'm just going to mark where I think I can trim it off. I want to leave a, about a 10 mil, which is about two eighths of an inch overlap. So there's my little line on there and I'll trim that off. Boom, trimmed. Turn those away. So that fits nice and snugly in there and I want to keep that shape so I'm going to pinch it on the join, bring it out along with some epoxy that's realigned the cylinder and you can always just check before you go any further by popping it back in, adjusting it getting it exactly right so it sits nicely in that rim, pinching it, bringing it out, and then close peg that side, close peg that side, and leave that to set. It's a bit like Blue Peter this. I did one uh, a day or so ago and my epoxy has now set, so this is a nice uh, cylinder that's ready to pop in. And what I'm going to do now is fix this cylinder to the inside of the top of my stove. Because this is the important bit 
where this cylinder fits into here, we want a seal. So I'm going to put a bead of the heat resistant epoxy into there and secure that in. Got a bead of glue around the top of my inner wall. I'm then going to pop this now into the top of my stove. Again, a waiting game. The end is in sight, folks. We're going to now connect the pieces of the alcohol stove together. Before we join them together, I'm just going to make two little cuts in the inner wall here, which I'm not sure if they're actually needed, but they're going to allow fuel to transfer between the main chamber and this side wall here. There's all in here, and then just smooth it out again. All we need to do is just put some little crimps about 10 mils apart, which will make this middle bit look a little bit like a pastry cutter. Just take the needle nose pliers to about this point, and rather than twist it along the way the curve goes, twist it down and towards the middle slightly. So down and toward and inside. And now this will help allow eventually the top to slide over the bottom. And I'm now just going to put a bead of the heat resistant silicon glue along here to help achieve a seal. To get this top bit to fit onto the top of the bottom bit, it's important that we don't slide it on at an angle as it goes on. It's important that we try and get it as straight as possible and just tease those crinkly bits in. But try and keep the cans as straight as possible. There we are. It's important to put this on a level hard surface and work from above. And as I ease the top of the stove down onto the bottom, I want to be looking inside that my false wall doesn't start to crinkle because it's actually going into a slightly smaller space than it is on the top here. Good. There we go, nice and level. And now I'm gonna give that a clean up. Also makes me nervous that bit, glad it's over. So, and there we have it. One alcohol stove with a nice uh, straight inner wall, a couple of V-cuts for the um, transferal of the um, fuel. There's only one thing to do, let's give it a go. Well, I really enjoyed that. I hope you did too. I hope you found it nice and simple, which was the idea of this video. Which leads me neatly on to, I always said that when I got 1,709 subscribers, that I'd do a giveaway. So tonight's the night. I made a Tinder pouch. It's class A cape leather. It's got a very nice leather looped um, drawstring and inside well I was a bit sneaky whilst I was making that stove I made another one so there's a brand new alcohol burning stove there's a fuel bottle I can't send it full of fuel obviously but there's enough there for a good few boils for your hot drinks or dehydrated meals 
And those of you that want to start um, your hand with a bit of flint and steel fire lighting eventually, tin box, and I've got four or five pieces of very thick 100% cotton denim in there, which does make really good char cloth. But I won't get it out, but there's a pot stand and that fits very neatly on top of the stove. So all that lit lot goes very nicely into the leather tinder or fire lighting pouch, whatever you want to call it. Draws up nicely and it's yours. All you need to do is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment after this video. In a couple of weeks time I'll use one of these apps that uh, randomly generates a list of names and well one name that comes from the comments made and I'll announce it as I say in a couple of weeks time. Thank you very much for subscribing and I look forward to seeing you again but it just remains for me to do one more thing. Simon, that bloke in the woods, made a very clever insert for one of these UCO lanterns and uh, I've copied it. It doesn't give that much light um, and I've got a mate that works for the um, local ro rocket propulsion plant and uh, he sent me a little bit of fuel so I'm going to give it a go to see if it um, helps with providing just a, a few more lumens. Ooh, how? Should be enough. Ooh, tingles. <laughs> Whoa! Well, it's ooh, certainly quite bright and gives a fair bit of warmth as well. Well, um, quite a good partial success. Um, really good lumens, um, but only about. Uh, four seconds worth of light, so maybe stick to the normal fuels and uh, or well take a short book Thanks for watching. See you again